Welcome to the Ringer NFL Draft Show live on YouTube, baby. Yeah, Woo. that's Solex Generations winning out over DK. DK, do you uh, <laughs> do you feel young and hip now that we're live on YouTube? Yeah, I have no idea how this thing works. I don't know what YouTube is. I'm used to magazines and reading books. So yeah, you're used just... to magazines, all right. <laughs> Read the articles, Craig. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Again, DK, flex. You're you're reading. I get it. We are doing a live mock draft. All four of us are going to be making. 32 pick. Obviously, it's 32 picks. It's a mock draft. You get that by now. But we're going to be going through the catches. We don't know who's picking for what team yet. We're going to randomize each pick as we do it. We're going to use this little twister randomizer I had. I think it's a little bent, and so it's not going to work. So I'm going to do it on my they phone. They have not innovated the game of twister <laughs> since it was invented. So they actually... And, they and had because some, it's the optimal yeah. game. It needs no improving. <laughs> it's, yeah. Can you imagine playing this now that we're old, like having to like bend and stuff? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh I would collapse. Isn't I that just stretch. yoga kind of? I feel like they just it's... turned that into a business. Yeah, dude, I, a, I a yoga mat that has twister things on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, oh. that's the move there. Save right. it, Craig. Don't tell people about this. This is too Write good. this down. Okay. Yeah. So this is live. Going... We can't cut this out. That's a great idea. <laughs> So uh, we're going to be going through, we're going to be updating. We have a, a wonderful, beautiful big board here that we're going to be updating as we go through all 32 picks. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's so big. It's uh, it's big. It's a beautiful. Look at that thing. It's beautiful. It's green. Love the gradient. The gradient oh. color. Yeah. A little yeah. yellow sneaking in there. A little sunshine. I don't know what the right Ringer's there. secondary color is. We're green. We're a green family, but I don't the, know what's second. The Ringer NFL draft show has a really strong Mountain Dew vibe, which I appreciate. Just that, That's what we're, that's what we're angling for right there. It's just like yeah. nuclear waste, and I that's, like it. <laughs> Radioactive. <laughs> More hyped, like a spider monkey. Okay, so yeah, and then ground rules here. Uh, again, we're gonna we're doing what we think will happen, not what we think should happen. So, you know, if they have to hold me back and restrain me, as if the, if you know DK gets the Giants pick and thinks the Giants will take JJ McCarthy, it's I don't get to weigh in. You know, it's what we think is going to happen here, and it's in beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So whatever you guys think is going to happen. You can disagree with it, but that's what we're going to go with in these drafts. And then also right. ground rules. It's hard to do a mock draft without trades. It's also hard to do a live show with with trades. So we have a trade god. There have been some pre-decided trades that uh, we will be informed of as the show progresses. So Which, we're... if the real NFL draft would like to take that idea, that's also a banger. There's something there. Okay, yeah. yeah. Just Roger Goodell just pressing <laughs> a, a big red button god. in his armchair <laughs> being like, and the yeah. bills are moving up and they have to figure it out. That's sick. Goodell just descends in week nine. He's like, Garrett Wilson, you're 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 gonna be on the Chiefs now. That just seems better. I would love them all to play Twister up there when they get drafted with Goodell. That'd be fun. Better than the hugs. All right. Without further ado, shall we? Shall we get into uh Let's do it. this business? All right. This is our like super high tech thing. Spin here. the wheel. Let's spin the wheel, baby. We're gonna hold it up to the camera. Like, like like that's the so, most boomer thing we're doing on the show. I know, show. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> it is super boomer. Okay, I grandpa, can't wait. hold it, hold it up to the all right. camera. So I can can't there, see there. it. Dude, right. Your settings app. We're it looks like it. a wheel. Boom. Oh, who's it gonna be? Ah. D oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Jump. oh. Solak. This ben is rigged. Solak. This you is get rigged. to make the first. It's extremely not rigged. It's Ben Solak. You get to make the first pick <laughs> for the jumped. Chicago Bears. Craig saw it. Who do you uh, Solak? We're on the edges of our seat here. Who do you, you know? I can't. I can't even imagine. Yeah, big, big, big draft rise for Joel on this one. Here he comes nice. down the mountain. No, it's uh, it's Caleb at one. It's been Caleb at one since like last summer, right? I think that we, we're we're taking for granted the fact that like we we get a draft once every like five years, ten years, really, where the guy who's going to be the first overall pick at the end of the previous season is actually the first overall previous uh the, the first overall pick once everything's said and done, right? Like Caleb has held this position now for over twelve months, uh, and and really like it was never close to losing it. There was there was like a a moment of, oh, Jaden Daniels, like, oh, maybe the Bears will trade the pick. But in general, like, this has been Caleb. It will be Caleb, and understandably so. He's got multiple all-pro ceiling to him. He's got multiple Super Bowl season to him. He's got MVP season to him. Like, he he is that caliber of quarterback prospect. He's going to save the Bears. If he doesn't, it'll be funny, <laughs> but he is going to save the Bears. Wow. DK, famous last I, words. You, you, we, we've talked about on the, on the draft show about mm -hmm. how Caleb Williams is a lot like either Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes and on the field, you know, I, I'm not necessarily saying Caleb Williams is necessarily like Aaron Rodgers off the field. Um, you know, we'll, who we'll is everyone do? Yeah. We'll, let, we'll let everyone do their <laughs> own research as Aaron Rodgers would say, but I do think Aaron Rodgers dominated the bears for so long. That is it cruel to tell bears fans, they might be getting their own version of Aaron Rodgers on the field. Or is it actually like the most accurate way to describe Caleb Williams is that what you just saw the dominance bears fans just endured. They might get a taste of themselves with this pick. 
I think anytime you talk about like either, you know, multiple MVP winning quarterback or the two thing, the two guys that he's been compared to are Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. So both of those comps are kind of problematic. I will just say the, the situation has really <laughs> rounded out well for Caleb Williams. Like the bears have done a good job of surrounding him with talent. They've traded for Keenan Allen, uh, DJ Moore, you know, the offensive line that could still improve in this draft. I, Things are really looking good for Caleb Williams. Not only does he have the talent, but now the situation that he's landing in is pretty good. And I'm I'm very, very excited for what he can do in the NFL. So uh, whether that turns into Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Holmes or whatever, I don't think we need to worry about right now. But he has what? a great situation to fall into here. We just got a comment from Jeremy who says, I always listen at 1.5 speed, so this is weird. I didn't really think about that. <laughs> Everyone sounds drunk. We all yeah. sound like we've we had also... like six beers. Also, somebody on Twitter responded to the photo I posted, Craig, and said, uh, uh, Craig looks like AI Tom Cruise, which I will be calling that back and referring to that many times. I think that's Tom right Cruise on, on the field, not off the field. We that's, want Tom Cruise on the field. In that's front of the don't, camera. Don't <laughs> let that go to Craig's head because he's like seven inches taller than Tom Cruise. So I, I wow. huge Tom for Craig. Cruise wishes. All right, second pick here. We have the randomizer, high tech randomizer is gonna land oh. on Craig. Am I AI yellow? Tom Cruise. You're yellow. I'm yellow. AI Tom Cruise. You go. You're on um, second pick, Washington, baby. What are they going to do? I don't do? look. I don't necessarily agree with this, but I, you know, I, I have to select what I think is going to happen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU, going to Washington. Although there's been some buzz today. Yeah, Jaden Daniels meeting with Minnesota. You know, shaking flirting. things up. Yeah. I think so, so Playing for the field. context, yeah, for context, usually the the. Agents of these players, if they don't believe that there's any chance they're going to fall, they're not going to take meetings with teams that will be like, you know, picking at six, seven, eight or whatever, if they think they're going number two. And the fact that Jane Daniels is now quite late in the game, taking a meeting with the Vikings is kind of interesting. Do you think he's retaliating after Washington had 20 people <laughs> to top golf? Speed they had the bachelor. They had 20 <laughs> prospects fly in for the week of the draft. Like what is I, going on? I need every story from that top golf. I just need like, you know, JJ McCarthy, like super try harding coming up in golf pants. I need like Drake may just being the guy who just like swinging with one arm, trying to hit it over the fence. Like I need, I need every anecdote from this top golf event. Did they really go to top golf? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. It's like a buddy, buddy sitcom season four uh... conceit. Like what if everybody went to top golf? We figured out who's the, who's gonna be the second overall pick. It's ludicrous. Do you think it was all, do you think all 20 players were at one, like T box or do no, you think they had I think, maybe four or right, five I think, players. I think there were multiple and people were reading into who's at which T box, right? Interesting. Like, like, like Jaden and, and, and Drake were in T box one. JJ McCarthy's in T box three with Michael Penix. Like, like there, there was a lot. I need these stories, Craig. I need them so bad. What did they, I, what, what was Washington hoping to accomplish with this? He's got it's, the nicest swing. Yeah. I it, think it, competitiveness. Bizarre, they want right. to see who's like getting absolutely who's angry the alpha? When, yeah, yeah. when they're getting out drove. I think they want to see that. And then I also think that they're probably trying to see like hand. But yeah, I think they're just trying to see who's sizing each other up. It's like it's like rattling a cage of puppies so and dumb. trying to be like, which one's not <laughs> yeah. afraid? I right. don't know. They have all the security footage and they have their team of psycho pseudo analysis scouts going through it, coming through it back in the facility, trying to figure out who's the guy. It really nice. is like ranking your friends, though. It's like the old MySpace days. You know, the, like, the show I just went that, from seven to nine. <laughs> you know, the show Undercover Boss. Do you think they had one of their like executives just yes. serv serving food or something? <laughs> <at Top Golf? laughs> Bob like Myers the is just in the back, like serving <laughs> Shirley Temples. No one knows what he looks like, so it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, Jane oh Daniels. God. All right, Jane Daniels to Washington. All right, next up here, we got the randomizer. Hi, Fitz, what color are you? Are you blue? Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm, what, oh, You're I'm red. red. You're red. There you go. All right. There's Heifetz. Oh, wow. It's me, baby. All right. Three. Be careful here, Heifetz. Your 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 job is on the line right now. I'm sure Bill Simmons is watching. Okay. Um. Well, uh, I'm not getting any calls for trade, so I am going to take Drake May, the quarterback from UNC, and I'm going to run home to the bank because, oh, my yeah. God. The Patriots – I. Shout out to um, Ben Glicksman, the editor in chief of the ringer.com, who said this to me like last about last year's draft. And he was so right, which is this. And Craig, you've said this too. the second pick last year was better than the first pick because you get to just take whoever falls to you. And if it's bad, whatever the Patriots, the Washington, if they get Jaden Daniels, Drake may wrong, huge problem. New England just gets to sit there and just take whoever like yeah. the fact that New England just gets to sit there and take Drake may they both get Drake may, but they also don't have the pressure of having gotten it wrong. 
uh, incredible for New England. I also think that Drake May is going to be incredible, but the Patriots just total lack of accountability by getting the third pick. This does kind of suck, though, setting it up for Drake May to step into New England because the know. offense has yeah. nothing going on. Like we, you know, Hyvitz, you're such a big like fit over over or you know nurture over nature, and it would just suck if we just throw Drake May into this team that has you know a bunch of waiver wire wide receivers and nothing else going on offensively, and he's just bad, and he just gets Josh Rosen. <laughs> I will they, say like, the the one advantage they do have is the defense is probably going to be pretty good. And that gives him a little bit of a foundation. And hopefully they make a trade. Brandon Ayuk, rumors out mm -hmm. there right now that the Patriots might be interested in a guy like Brandon Ayuk. I don't know if they can. They're obviously not going to give up the third pick to get him, but maybe a future first right. or something like that. But yeah, they absolutely need to get him more help. And, you know, the Patriots, this this offensive structure worries me a little bit. Yeah, they do have Jacoby Brissett. And so they can sit for whatever period of time they'd like. The main thing is always trying to figure out how your guy learns, right? Because some guys can learn like on the bench, QB2, holding the clipboard, on the whiteboard, on Tuesday. Some dudes just need to go out and do stuff. Like they do by learning. Like, I'm, I'm a huge do by learning guy. Like I just make a bunch of mistakes and then I figure it out and then I go. And so, oh, sit Drake May. Like, you know, don't let him get hurt. There's some veracity to that. But if, if he's not a good learner on the chalkboard and like needs to go through the process, could be, be kind of it, the QB one and making the mistakes on the field, you got to put him out there because you want him to be ready and be good next season when presumably you get a few more weapons in the building. Uh, I totally agree. So like one, he's Drake is 21 years old. And I, I think 21 year olds generally learn by making massive mistakes. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. I also have to say, so like we have a couple of YouTube comments here. Uh, Chris says, so like is dressed like Mr. Rogers. Uh, <laughs> I just was trying to be cozy. It's a little nippy out. I don't know. Artigan. He does look cozy. Uh, Cormac also says, how long until Solak's baby looks older than Solak? A while. I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm big. Babies I'm look like a old, baby. Babies look like old men when they're first born. So yeah, they do. probably right. not very long. Fourth pick here. Who's he? Oh, am I holding it wrong? Yeah, I am. You're good. You're good. It's oh, great. Craig. Craig. Nice. Craig again. I want to go this whole draft without picking. Yeah, you just sit there and <laughs> You've done enough mock drafts in your I'm life. Saying, you don't need yeah, any like, more. I feel like I, the, the hay is in the barn. I don't need to do any more mock drafts <laughs> at this point. Um, Arizona Cardinals fourth pick, Craig. Who are you taking? And you're getting no calls about trade no right call now, right? The trade god is not weighing in right here. The trade god the is, trade not, god is um, ignoring you right now. Yeah, the no answers. Silence. This is pretty simple then. I do think that four is a real hot spot for a trade up. But if, if, if they're holding uh, steady, I'm going with Marvin Harrison Jr., Wide receiver, yeah. Ohio yeah. State. Uh, I personally feel like at four and five, I just want both these teams to take wide receivers. I don't want them to trade out. I, uh, the, the top brain. Fa uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> just the top three wide receivers it. are so, so good in this draft. <laughs> I just want Justin Herbert and Kyler Murray to have somebody to throw to. Uh, I don't know if that's too much to ask, but I'm happy. I'm happy there was no trade up and I can stay here and give Marvin Harrison to the Cardinals. DK, I've asked it before. I'm going to ask it again. Mm -hmm. If Marvin Harrison Jr. was still Marvin Harrison's son, but he was named... Fred, would he be the first pick in this draft over Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze? What if they're the all Seabers all their names were Fred? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fred Adunze, yes. Fred Neighbors, and Fred Harris. <laughs> I think maybe he is getting a slight uh, cachet bump or whatever you have it uh, because his name is Marvin Harrison. Jr., Nepotism. The, he has all the skills. He, he is a complete prospect, a good, good route runner, elite size, um, elite catch radius. He has incredible body control. He's like... Garrett Wilson's body control in, you know, a, a 20 pounds or whatever, however heavy, much heavier he is. He scores a ton of touchdowns. He can go deep. He can get off the line. Like he has a full skill set. His name, his name maybe affects it a little bit, but again, I'm going to say Jerry Rice's son is in this draft and we're not talking about him. So it's please stop saying. It's Jerry Rice Jr. It's Brendan please, Rice. It doesn't matter. His last name is Rice. Jeremiah, 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 Rice's Jeremiah son. Connor Jr. is going to go round four. Maybe Brendan Please Rice. Please stop saying Marvin Harrison skating by you, on his name. You guys, I think it's finally time that I announced that my last name is actually Goodell. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. want that to affect yeah. things. You were you were going under a pseudonym and you chose Horlbeck. <laughs> That's, That's a good not last name. No one That's, noticed. Yeah, it's a real smoke screen. No one looked into that. All right, let's recap the board here, the first four picks. So we pull it up. We got the Bears taking Caleb Williams. Quarterback at USC, we have the Washington Commanders taking Jaden Daniels. Quarterback at LSU emerges from their top golf bachelor party. Patriots take Drake May out of UNC just because they get to sit there and be like, sure, whatever. Cardinals take Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, if he was Brendan Harrison, we'll see. But those are the first four picks. Chargers are on the clock now with five. However, I am hearing from the trade god, 
in the heavens that we have a trade. We have a deal. The is that the sound? Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, the siren. That's our high. Yeah, yeah, do it. I like that actually. The Minnesota Vikings are sending the 11th and 23rd picks plus a third rounder next year to the oh, Chargers. That's a good deal. Moving up, Minnesota has the fifth mm. pick. Now we will do a little randomizer action. Minnesota on the clock. Think, well, actually, wait before we do that. We, w- the sound one more time. We have to do the sound. Beow, beow, beow. Yeah, thank you. That was really important. All right. And then for the wheel, it's our sound effects <laughs> budget is quite low. <laughs> it's crazy. And it's going to be. That's right. Greg yeah. has, DK it's hasn't rigged. Yet. Uh, they're the trading way. up. They're trading up to take Lad McConkey. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got to get the guy. <laughs> All right. But he's there. You got to go get him. You got to get your guy. Uh, if, if Minnesota's trading up to five here, they presumably want a quarterback. I'm giving them John James McCarthy, a.k.a. <laughs> J.J. McCarthy, Michigan man, immediately stepping into one of the best supporting cast of any quarterback getting drafted in the top five in a long time. Although Caleb's is pretty good at one. Um, yep. but yeah, this is an immediate situation where he doesn't have to start. Sam Darnold's there. Um, and he has a full cast of characters around him. Jefferson, Addison, Hawkinson's coming off an injury. Uh, they have Aaron Jones now. So um, they have a great coach and play caller, Kevin Connell. Uh, so this is a great pick. Look, I've come around on J.J. McCarthy at five for Minnesota because if you put him in a great situation, I think this could work. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this makes a ton of sense. And like you said, how okay, what would you put the over-under on how many games he sits? Do you think that they would actually start Sam Darnold this year? Or if this trade happens, or do you think they just go straight to McCarthy? I think th- like over under like two or three and a half. I would say I think McCarthy top five is probably playing by October. Yeah. Top five quarterback picks generally don't sit for very long. Well, I think my question, so like you've kind of been hard on McCarthy. I'm curious. Again, I do think this is probably on the short list of the greatest group of pass catching weapons any rookie quarterback will ever have worked with. Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Hawkinson off the ACL, as Craig said, Aaron Jones is one of the better receiving backs. I, you're not a huge fan of McCarthy, but it's like I'm curious. Do you just believe that J.J. McCarthy, because this is a perfect situation, can he just kind of immediately be delivering like an 11-win season? Like the Vikings, could they just beat the Lions in the NFC North? Like, they, like, let me let me add to that question before you answer, Ben. If okay. Drake May in New England year one, J.J. McCarthy in Minnesota year one, who has the better statistical season? Oh, J.J. McCarthy, 100%. No question. Yeah. Uh, McCarthy, like, I, I'm tough on McCarthy, but my line on both Jane Daniels and J.J. McCarthy's whole time has been, I like both players. I don't want to go spend the pick that's going to be necessary to go get the guy. Like, I don't want to take J.J. at five. I'd love to get him more in, like, the Mac Jones, Paxton Lynch range, right? Like 15, 26. Because there's a big difference between those picks. Uh, I think J.J. is destined to be a Brock Purdy. I think he's destined to be a Jimmy Garoppolo, like the 13th best quarterback in the league. And, and you don't want to dedicate a top five pick to that and then have to give that guy a huge contract. But when he's on the rookie deal with those weapons, yeah. I mean, like, like the Vikings can be quite productive quite early with JJ or honestly with Drake or with Jaden. Like they are well suited to install rookie quarterback and go. Can I just so say the, something real quick? Uh, the chat just thirsty for Craig right now. Craig, Craig yeah. is the, the ringer draft. Show it's all the Craig. Scientologists <laughs> after the Tom Cruise comment are watching. I think that's what it is. Yeah, we got uh, Mike. Mike says they think I prefer listening to the podcast because I'm finding Craig to be very distracting during the live stream. Uh, that's just my wife with a with a pseudonym. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a plant. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are saying this. We get it, Craig. I paid yeah, all handsome. of them. They've Craig all is Ryan Reynolds and Welcome to Wrexham, where it's like Rob McElhinney just standing there and just like everyone wants to see Ryan Reynolds. Like, oh, I, no also, I do have my own gin, so check there it you out. Go. <laughs> so they uh, so top five picks there. So we got Caleb Williams, USC. We have Jaden Daniels to Washington. We have Drake May to the Patriots. And then we have Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals. And we have now J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings. Uh, and then, you know, what? Well, look at that little uh, squad there. At number six on the board, the New York Giants, oh, give baby. Give it to me. Give it to me. Ooh, give it to all me. right. Um, oh, my God. All right. I'll get the random. Spin that wheel. Oh, please, 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 please. I love that we're holding a phone up to the camera. I well, you know what, man? It's it's just. Hey! It's ooh, ooh. It jumped again. <laughs> no. oh. oh, wait, that's me. That's me. Oh, that is oh, I did okay, it. Okay. No, oh, <laughs> I got confused because he's. This also is standing. the best time ever. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> wow. Oh. Breathe, breathe. Okay. So, again, we're doing. I'm so glad JJ McCarthy's off the board, so that we don't even have to have the conversation. It's absolutely <laughs> yeah, you're right. lucky. Uh, the Giants uh, I certainly need a receiver. I think the questions between Malik Neighbors at LSU and Roma Dunes at Washington. There, it's just different strokes for different folks. I feel like Malik Neighbors is faster. DK Compton, Ricky Bobby, and I feel like. The, the Giants just need that element of speed and he would be awesome. I will say this. I wonder if I, I kind of wonder if Roma Dunze will just thrive 
better in New York. It's a very challenging market. And I just think that I, I kind of personally feel like Roma Dunze might have a better career on the Giants than Neighbors will. Having said that, I think the Giants are going to take Malik Neighbors. I think Brian Dable wants to go fast. Yeah, uh, I, I just I, I really think that Brian Dable like had a very poor poker face throughout the combine. DK, were you there with me in Indy, like seeing like the all the Giants receivers talk about how they all were talking about how happy Brian Dable was to speak to them? <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't remember this. Um, <laughs> why? What, so, OK, first of all, my question is, in terms of the fit, do you think that there's any redundancy with neighbors in the fact that they drafted? Uh, Jalen Hyatt last year, kind of like a field stretching deep threat type guy, or is it just neighbors just is so good it doesn't matter at all? I mean, I think you just move him around, you do whatever with him, and I also just think as a matter of principle, I don't know if you just like use your sixth pick because you used the third rounder last year. It's like no, that's like cart not. before the horse. Right. I don't know. So like you just you're sitting there with a little like grit. Is this the right pick? No, I, I like I'm sitting at the grinks. I'm reading the chat. The chat's really funny. <laughs> um, we should we should have a live chat for all of our pods. This is great. Is it just, just all it. about Craig's the five o'clock shadow is handsome? I need the close up <laughs> right now. To the like whole pretty pod. much whoever makes the pick and gets the big screen is just getting bullied for their background. I keep getting yelled at for my cardigan. Uh, Craig super hot like the usual. That stuff. Craig um, that Craig is so hot right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I I like. I, I think you're right in that if, if the Giants are picking between neighbors and Adunze, I think they will take neighbors. Very funny uh, to be once again doing the Darius Slayton contract thing, right? I saw it yesterday. It was like Darius Slayton, oh, yeah. who like for the fifth year in a row has led the Giants in receiving and for the fifth year in a row doesn't have a year next they, year, would like to get an extension. Yeah, I think they, they, they want to get a speed element that they like more than Darius Slayton. And I know that because they keep not paying Darius Slayton. Hi, Fitz. I, Do you want a quarterback to be available at six? Uh, I would, I would, I would do horrible things for Drake May or Jaden Daniels to fall, and I don't want. JJ I'm basically McCarthy. talking about JJ McCarthy. Do you want JJ McCarthy to be available at six so that you, the Giants have to uh, sweat that out? If the Giants took him, I'd be, I'd talk myself into it in twelve seconds, maybe thirteen. Okay. I, if the Giants could trade back, I would be open to that too. But I, if the Giants took McCarthy, I feel like the roster. I just don't see McCarthy being such an open. Like McCarthy makes so much sense to the Vikings with like a, a Shanahan S team. Like he's kind of like Kirk Cousins light. You're replacing Kirk Cousins for really cheap. You pay Justin Jefferson. I think the Vikings like could build up on defense, and make a Super Bowl run. That makes sense to me. The Giants just, I ugh, no. It's like, I get a superstar. I no, I, I not more Daniel Jones. The whole thing's sad. Just get a cool receiver. Um, Whatever. All right. Titans are up <laughs> next on number seven, seventh pick here. Who's going to win? Oh, you again. again. Is it going to be? All right. DK Woo! is killing it at this point. Yeah, DK. DK. Have you, yeah. That's an incredible bit. DK oh, for our, seven. Uh, senior senior draft analyst or whatever your title is, DK. Just this is where it. I take it easy. You guys, you guys tell me about these players, the, right? So I mean the Titans State Joe Alt, the Paul yeah. Bunyan out of Notre Dame. Uh DK, why <laughs> did you comp Joe Alt to no, to Paul Bunyan? Is because he's six foot eight? Yes. He's oh. extremely tall. That's it. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> he's All right, really well, tall. We move on. Just makes you think of a tall person when you see I, that he, that he's six foot eight. You know, um, maybe that's maybe not my best comp I, ever, but yeah. No, I love it. I also just really do think the Titans need line, and also I just keep coming back to the fact that the head coach's dad is the offensive line coach, and he's gonna look his dad. His dad's gonna be like, "We're take." I, I think of it like Logan Roy. I'm like they're gonna look him in the eye and be like, "Uh, no, Dad, we're we're gonna take Roma Dunze," and his dad's gonna look him in the eye like, "No, they're, they're going to line." Them. Joe Alt next to Peter Skaronsky. Oh, that's pure sex I, right it's... there. I love that. Will Levis, man. What kind of sex are you having? <laughs> oh, offensive tackle sex. Offensive <laughs> lineman? That's the part that reminds you. That's the part that gets you going. The 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 line play. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. Big time. They um the the like the Titans kind of, you know, uh showing and and and, and tipping their hand that they're gonna take tackle. Like there's some debate, like, oh, maybe they trade back or whatever. This offense, man, like if they get a good tackle, they're Pretty and like Callahan's there and like like they have everything they need to find out if Levis is good or not. They like they're not a tackle away from competing, but they're a tackle away from finding out if they're real. And so I think it's great. Like they can just stay and take all. It's one of those like sec not sexy ho hum nobody cares picks, but it's a great franchise pick for them. Titans What's are an all time like people? Titans are an all time talk yourself into them this year team, and then they're gonna win four games probably. But like you <laughs> could really you're like man DeAndre Hopkins kind of still got it. Calvin Ridley, you know, Tony Pollard had a bad year, but he's good. Traylon Burks maybe this yeah. is his year. Chig. <laughs> Year four or whatever it is. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Number eight here. We Come on, baby. No whammies. No whammies. With Atlanta Falcons. Let's see how long we can go without DK Happy to do it. Come on, baby. All right. He's safe. <laughs> it's going to okay. be me again? Yes. 
This oh is great. God. Uh, so Atlanta Falcons here on the board at number eight. Uh, this is so. Everyone has them taking Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama. I Ooh. is there? I is there? So I can see it. Is should I? I'm torn between that and like I don't know. Maybe they could take Leatu Latu out of UCLA. Like the defensive coordinator for the Falcons right now was co- like coached Latu in in college, and then at the same time you also have maybe Byron Murphy because the Falcons have a bunch of defensive tackles who are um, older or might just not be on the team in 2025. So I mean, I yeah. Before I lock this in, so like, do you have? Or DK, you haven't gone yet. Would you? Should I go Dallas Turner here? Yeah, I'm, that's I, not how that is. That's this, yeah, that's yeah. Not I'm, 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 I'm taking Dallas it Turner. easy right now, man. Fine, I'll be yeah, bored. Yeah. Dallas Turner is good. I his name is his name is pretty like Baywatch could have had a character named Dallas Turner. Oh it's yeah, kind of, like, totally. incredible. Has <laughs> yeah. he Dallas got like Turner. a cowboy vibe to him? Like you know, Will like, Anderson, California. Yeah, Will Anderson is a better player at Alabama, but imagine if Will Anderson had been named Dallas Turner. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dallas Turner shows up to the Santa Monica Beach. He comes from Texas. He's never been to the ocean before. All the girls love him. Cowboy hat. That probably happened in the show. So I'll check. I'll check that. All right. All right. I've got the math running right now. It was DK having not made a pick through eight picks is a one out of ten chance. Yeah, right, I was so going to say, what are the odds is here? Let's. Yeah, let's, this is ten percent of the time one person right. makes no picks. So right. we're gonna keep it running. Let's no uh, whammies, also no bring whammies, up the no big whammies. board here. Let's bring up the big board here. Let's just do a little recap on where we're at. So we have eight picks in the in the bag. We got Caleb to the Bears. We got Jen Daniels to Washington. We got Drake made to the Pats. Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals. We got Chargers traded down with the Vikings. Vikings took J.J. McCarthy. We got Malik Neighbors to the Giants. We got Titans taking Joe All, a.k.a. Paul Bunyan, out of Notre Dame. And the Falcons taking He's Dallas tall. Turner, Baywatch star. And Atlanta Bears are on the board at number nine. All Here right, we should we go a little our little spinny wheel? Come on, baby. Oh, death you. The, the inevitable spinny wheel. We got it. It's rolling. Come on, yellow. Bam. No, not no, not even a shot for DK. Not DK. That's nine. Solak. Solak oh, yeah. the Bears at nine. He gets not to. This is amazing. I'm uh I'm so I I'm really happy that Roma Dunze has become like a standard expectation for this pick, and that's the pick I'm going to make here at nine for the Bears. When they signed Keenan Allen, it was like or, or traded for him, excuse me. It was kind of like, hey, like you know, they got DJ Moore, they got Keenan Allen, Cole Kmet's on an extension, like they have their pass catchers. But when you look at the elite teams, like the teams that make long playoff runs, which the Bears are trying to build that. Those are teams that have multiple elite pass catchers. They have multiple great weapons. And Keenan Allen's only there for a year. He's getting old. Cole Komet is not that. Like, they need to add more to DJ Moore in the future. When you also look at the teams that develop young quarterbacks well, they're teams that have multiple elite pass catchers, right? This is this is the, the move right now. Is you got to have a guy and then a guy who can also be the guy on any given week. And that's going to be DJ Moore and Roma Dunze long-term term for the Bears. This is a great, like, this year pick. Because it just incubates Caleb so much. It gives him such great weapons. And it's a great like year two and year three and year four pick. Because you move on from Keenan Allen. And you still have two potentially wide receiver one caliber players. DJ Moore is what, 26? Like they're both under 27. They're entering their primes while Caleb's on his rookie contract. Like this is the build that got the Bengals to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. This is a, a perfect pick. And I'm not, I don't mean to beat it to death. But Caleb Williams really does remind me a lot like Aaron Rodgers. And in Roman every Dude's way. Yeah, in every way. In, yeah, in no, everything. Ways. He believes yeah. anything you tell him, pal. I was at the combine. I talked to Caleb Williams for thirty minutes about Doctor Fauci. You know, it's just in every this way. Is, we know, are the people can uh, clip this show, guys. That's, we got yeah, this. Yeah, that did not happen. Um, yeah, do your own research. But no, but Caleb Williams on the field does remind me of Aaron Rodgers. And Roma Dunze reminds a lot of people of Devontae Adams. DK, you have shades of Devontae Adams in your draft guide at NFLDraft.3.com. Not that we're asking you what you think for any of these picks. Solak but, came up with that too on his own. So yeah. Loving but that. so, th- is it cruel to be taunting in front of Bears fans' faces? Oh, you're gonna have Rodgers and Devontae Adams. It'll be great. I mean, it like we're feels them up for a fail. It, yeah, it feels like we're cursing them, or, or what's the word, jinxing them. But yeah, I mean, I still think stylistically, it makes a ton of sense. Um, if you if you're building a receiver group to look like a basketball team, like DJ Moore, yards after the catch, like incredibly elusive. We got Keenan Allen who can get open early and and move the chains. You got, and then you have Roma Dunze who is a pure X receiver, like a throwback X receiver. He can win even when he's covered. He's and, so good, dude. He's yeah. so good. So I love this. I think, uh, man, I'm just getting more and more excited about what Caleb Williams can do. In the I game. hope they do this because the weapons for the Bears are a little top heavy. Like we said, it's like DJ Moore, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's going to be 32 this year. Cole Komet. And then it's like, DK, name another Bears wide receiver other than DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. Tyler Scott, who I don't think did really That's anything right. as Tyler a Scott. And then I don't know. Um, make they have t- uh, they 35 got, they year old got... Velas Jones Jr. Yeah, oh they they, they got the Jones. the little punt returner from the Bengals. Is he still there? 
Uh, nope. I'm gonna right. move on. We're naming pick. punt returners. Right, Taylor, the Bengals. We're it's moving Dante on to Pettis, pick. who's somehow still on. in the league. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Tenth pick. Yes. Woo! Craig. Tenth pick. The <laughs> what are we up at the odds right now? Buddy? All right. I'm, I, God, three to the fourth to the tenth power is five point six percent. All right, <laughs> this, you're, you know, Solak is young Sheldon. I just figured it keep, out. Keep going, baby. I'm good. I'm. It's a calculator. I didn't do that off the dome. I God, was wondering that, the whole time, so I cardigan? appreciate you looking it up. Six percent chance that DK has not picked. Huge. Solak's critic. young Sheldon and the Craig. The comments are on Craig are. Uh, we have, dude. I've never realized Craig is such a smoke show. It's just like all people are really. We nice. need to be done with this bit. We need to okay. move on from this bit. All right. Well, then pick someone <laughs> for the Jets. Shut up, okay. Craig. You love it. I don't. Okay, number 10. <laughs> I know everybody wants Brock Bowers to go to the Jets. I'm not going to give it to him. I, what? Good. The Jets need an Good. offensive lineman for Aaron Rodgers to stay on the Ooh. damn field. 100%. That is the single most important piece of the Jets. Is it? Would it be cool if they had like a fun tight end that could – tight ends are, are famously not important uh, in their rookie seasons. Th that is not what you need right now for Aaron Rodgers. You need to win right now. They need to tackle. I'm giving them Olu Fashanu out of Penn State and – this is going to keep Aaron Rodgers' other Achilles from snapping four plays into the game. I love that. Maybe he'll make it six plays. Maybe six. Uh, yeah. It it is good and it is defensible. And like you can't trust Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith. I think that's fine. I would say that Brock Bowers is like a good pick that helps Rodgers. It also does help Rodgers stay on the field. Tight ends, like, you know, chipping and blocking and helping those tackles. Like I, you know, there's there's bit well, butter both sides of the bread here. Pretty well, good. I, 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 I'm not going to lie. So look, I, I like spiritually disagree to my core because on one hand, Rogers is literally infamous for never integrating rookie receivers. And then tight ends are infamous for outside of last year, almost never yeah, double negative. All right. It just cancels. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 11th pick here. And again, the, the chargers, are picking now because the Chargers traded down from the fifth pick. Oh, 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 with oh. Minnesota. Yeah. No. So nope. <laughs> incredible. Uh, yeah. So, like, you're picking for the LA Chargers who traded <laughs> this down. This is wild. TK, I'm yeah, very impressed. TK, why don't you take a walk? Yeah, go. No, <laughs> just seriously. Go, go grab you have to, like, watch snack. your kid or something? To go get some coffee. Let the babysitter take a, yeah, take a lap. Uh, I think I'm taking Brock Bowers here at 11 for the Chargers. Ooh. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think, so you've seen some Brock Bowers, like I think last month there was some like, what if he falls to 15, 16, 18. And over the last couple of days, we've seen a lot of like every team that's in like the top 10, like at seven, at eight and nine, they're all meeting with Brock Bowers. Like it really feels like his range is going to be top 12. I believe that right now at tight end, uh, for the Chargers, we have, uh, uh, Will Disley. Yeah. Hayden Hurst. Donald I will have Parham. no Disley. Yeah. No Disley hate here. You will have Disley slander, and you will like it, sir. Uh, Brock Bowers here. This is a, uh, a yards of the catch weapon. He's a designed catch weapon. He's a downfield guy. He is a is a all around a, a player at tight end. We're talking about a Sam Laporta level of impact in terms of of year one, right? I think he can be that sort of a, a producer. He also helps with some of the protection problems, right? Like they're uh, they could and I think should add a right tackle, but they do like Trey Pipkins in the building. At least they, the, the previous staff did put the tight end next to Trey Pipkins, protect him a little bit from the outside rushers and you can get away with the Trey Pipkins. And so I think Brock Bowers would be a great pick for the chargers at 11. Uh, yeah. Let's bring up the board here. So we got 11 picks on the board. Just a quick recap. Uh, that was surprising. So like what I, I see what you're saying also Bowers, is just like a football player. I feel like Harbaugh is going to talk about him and use some like forties football players to be like, yeah, Brock Bowers. Like that's how it's supposed to be played. Like it does seem like a Harbaugh kind of guy. Yeah, so they, I like this, and they need pass catchers. Like I, like I, it, we can't ignore the fact that like with wide receiver and offensive tackle are both huge needs. Take a tight end, get half of both. All right, so let's keep rolling here. Uh, let's go. So we got the twelfth pick here. We have the Denver Broncos are on the board. Let's see. I kind of at this point, I'm actively rooting against DK ever getting a. And he game. still is out. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's <laughs> it. Wait, wait, wait. So the Seahawks are at what? 16? Sixteen. Okay, we got to make it to the Seahawks before DK picks. All right, Denver All right. here at 12. I kind of think Denver is in, like, they just need everyone territory. Like, mm -hmm. anyone and anyone, best player available kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, they obviously need a quarterback, but they need a lot of help on defense. I'm going to give him an edge <laughs> rusher. I'm going to give him Leo yeah. Tulatu out of UCLA. Oh, I, I think that's what I would have done, too. I was, I was trying to prep for this just in case my name finally came up, and I was like, corner maybe i think you could pair him with with uh sertan sertan and and have a really good duel there but i think pass rush probably makes the most sense in terms of like bang for your buck at that spot um and i don't think they're probably not going to take like a bo nix or michael Penix at that that high yeah i definitely don't think a quarterback is going that high i do agree with craig like it's kind of like 
who is good, take the best one on, on, that you can get. They have tackle need spots. They have corner need spots. Like those guys are there. Edge is like the one of the leanest groups in this year's class. Like there's some good top guys, and then it falls off. And so if you're Denver and you're thinking we're just taking good dudes, you feel a lot better about your ability to get a starting corner in round two and a starting tackle in round two. They don't have the round two pick, but just as an example, then you do about a starting edge. And so getting a guy here that you'd like as, as a player can get on the field right now. And I comp him with Bradley Chubb, who like used to be there in Denver. I like it a lot. I like, yeah. I think this is a great pick, and they just need football players. Uh, uh, I three percent chance that DK doesn't pick in the first twelve <laughs> picks. I need everybody to know in the pre-show. Yes, our yes. producers asked us; they were like, "If you guys do the wheel, you know, there's a chance that like nobody makes a pick." And we, we were, were like, like yeah, "Yeah, that's ideal. That, that that's would be exactly awesome. what we want. That would be a, that's exactly what we're hoping for." DK is, is the the one person I would choose to be suffering through this right now. <laughs> Delightful. Uh, come on, baby, keep it going. All right, so is this wait thirteen for the Raiders? <laughs> Oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 no. No. Oh, oh, no. Oh, damn it. No. The streak's no. over. DK gets the pick uh, for the Raiders. Oh, the honestly, Raiders. Make it count, so buddy. Take this Penix. is tough. Penix. The Raiders. Yeah, honestly, I actually think this is one of the hardest teams to figure out in the entire draft. So there you go. Good luck, DK. Who are the Raiders taking with the 13th pick? Okay, so this is the draft of what we think is going to happen. There is an yes. awful lot of smoke around Michael Penix and the Raiders. I think there's a chance the Raiders – trade back up into the first and take him later in this round. And that's maybe the most realistic thing here, but I'm giving him Michael Penix. I think there's yeah. too much smoke oh. to completely ignore it. The Raiders just can't help themselves as a franchise. It feels like they are always <laughs> making decisions. Exactly. <laughs> like this. if we're, if we're doing this mock draft and we're putting a lot of thought and we're having all these picks be like really reasonable and like a good marriage of like, who's on the board with what the team needs and like thinking all that. And then one pick is like, man, that would be really controversial. A lot of people would see it as a reach. And that pick is the Raiders. I think we're doing something right. <laughs> yeah. And that's how the first round yeah. always goes, right? There's a couple of picks where are like, this is super out of left yeah. field. Um, I agree. The smoke on Penix is for the Raiders, especially is huge. The other position there has been smoke for them on is outside corner. And they're it, both Terry and Arnold mm -hmm. and Quinn and Mitchell are here. And so this is actually like, kind of like an ideal board for the Raiders. If this is their short list of guys, like everyone's available. If they take Penix over to Quinn and Mitchell, it's a choke. It's an unbelievable choke. But, you know, I think DK is right to prognosticate the choke. But you say that, but at the same time, but if Michael Penix is good, they're never going to be like, yeah, I wish we had a cornerback. Like, well, yeah, the, if, if the player you draft is good, you don't feel about the other players you didn't. I think, obviously, but like, I don't think that the, that the chance for Penix being that is that high. And that's why you grade drafts after the draft instead of after three years. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the whole like, you know, mock draft is kind of insane. We're really just doing fan fiction here. You know, I love that. Nice. My my first pick, I'm just swooping in and just making Austin Gale just Penix. absolutely miserable. Yeah, just like, <laughs> right now, right. it's just dying inside. Next up here, we have the New Orleans Saints picking 14th. We got here we go. Uh, spinner of death. Watch DK make every pick now. <laughs> Who's green? Is that me? Yes. All right. Excellent. Of, New Orleans Saints, 14th. Who are they taking? Uh, I'm very tempted to take corner here. And I do think that's a potential for them because they were thinking about a Marshawn Lattimore trade this offseason. With that said, this is Talise Fuaga, the tackle at Oregon State. That's what they would be doing here. Uh, left tackle for them is a huge question mark with the way that Trevor Penning, it was a first-round pick in 2022, has played over the last couple of years. He's also had injury concerns. Right tackle, Ryan Ramchek, who's a wonderful player, excellent talent, might be at the point with his knee injuries where he just can't go. Like, he might just be, he like, medically retire. done. Yeah, he, might, he might medically retire. So their, their tackle position is about as dire as any tackle position in the league right now. So if you're getting one... Uh, like the OT three on the board here falling to you in, in Talese Fuaga and people think Fuaga might be a top 10 pick. I think that's absolutely like a, a kind of a run the card in. Even if there's no Fuaga, I could see them taking Troy Fontenot here, JC Latham here. Like this is yeah. a, a better tackle than they might end up getting uh, at 14 on draft night. And so Fuaga to the Saints, I think they, they, they would take a minute on the clock to make the selection. I like that one a lot. All right, 15 here. We're going 15 to the Indianapolis Colts. Here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Feeling good. We got... Ah, Greg. Oh, 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 yeah. right. oh, uh, I think this is 15. pretty easy. A, a couple great corners have fallen and not been drafted yet. And I think the Colts desperately need a cornerback. So I'll give them, I'll give them Quinion Mitchell. Ooh, yeah. Good pick. The, uh, the Colts cornerback situation, man, last year, they were just throwing young men at the problem. Just like who, fifth round rookie, sixth round rookie, UDFA, <laughs> somebody, please be good. Anybody be good for us. And like, they had some fine play, but it was nobody who was enough, right? And so, yeah, they are uh, the, the Colts are low key in a great spot because the like, corner could fall for them, edge could fall for them, two of their biggest needs. Like, they're a good trade back team. They can go and start the run on the second receivers if they want. Like, the Colts 
I have the I have a have a chance to do a really really good thing in this draft, like propel the team forward. So Chris Ballard's like inevitably going to trade back eleven picks to take a guard, but whatever. Quinion Mitchell, big, strong, fast, well built person, just fits the fits the Colts draft style. Uh oh, we have a trade. The trade god. <laughs> what? It, that's a siren. That's more like the trade police. <laughs> I, need a god, I, need, I need a god sound. What oh. is the sound of God? <laughs> yeah, I'll work on that. I'll, work, I'll get back to you. <laughs> it's, it's it's you know it, it comes to you. Uh, yeah. like the burning bush. All right, so the the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Ooh, oh, holy smokes! Wow. Oh, hell the yeah! Kansas City we, Chiefs. We, we really have not seen these trades, and we don't know what these are. Yeah, trading the, their first and second pick plus a second rounder next year to the Seattle Seahawks for the oh, 16th pick. Yes. Kansas City is on the clock, baby. Moving up. Interesting. All right, let's see. We're gonna do this little spinner. Who gets to make this pick for the Kansas City Chiefs? Who's it gonna be? Oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, Solak, you get to pick for the Chiefs. Chiefs just moved up to the 16th pick. Who is Kansas City taking here at Solak? Could they make this move for? I'm taking J.C. Latham, the tackle at Alabama. <laughs> I think that, uh, like, which, oh, Chiefs traded up 16 picks to take a tackle. Like, boring, lame, not sexy. Latham might be a top 10 pick. Like, some of the smoke on Latham right now is yeah, yeah. nuts in terms of the teams that he's meeting with and the expectations for him. This is a bad, like, this is the classic tackle prospect who doesn't get put as, like, OT1 or OT2 because, like, he doesn't have, like, oh, look at the testing numbers. Like, oh, these highlight real pancakes. You just watch the film, like, oh, he doesn't lose. Like, he wins every rep, and it's just You're silent. Who's busy winning? Yeah, it's just it's silent, <laughs> and, it's, and it's dominant, and, and, and it's well-rounded, and, it, and it's excellent. The tackle situation for the Chiefs last year was about as prohibitive – to their offense as the wide receiver situation was the wide receiver stuff was more visible like oh the drops and the messed up routes but donovan smith at the left side regularly losing jawan uh taylor on the right side with the, with the consistent penalties right now like they would expect Juan Yamoras, morris who is a third round pick and a young guy really unproven to be their starting left tackle i think they want to have better protection for mahomes i think that you have to protect the investment that you've made there jc jc latham i think slides in as, as starter day one on, on the left tackle and pretty much shuts things down on that side he's got that level of potential wide receivers just so deep it's always so deep so even like oh you know there's rasheed rice questions with with his legal situation wide receivers a bigger need you can address it later you really really can i know they just traded future picks to move up but I, if they're moving up like this i was th between terry and arnold and getting a luxurious need replacement and jc latham and i think latham would be the pick yeah let's throw the board up here so we are halfway through we got the top 16 picks done we got uh, we got uh, four quarterbacks in the top five we got marvin harrison jr and malik neighbors and roma dunsey off the board and we also have what one two three four offensive tackles already off the board we'll see whether there's obviously might be like a record amount of offensive tackles in the first round might be a record amount of offensive players Chiefs moving up for latham i think it i, I agree so like like at the end of the day you're in, it's like a lot of picks people want them to have a receiver you're investing in patrick mahomes safety it's like you, you can't get him the secret service on the field you might as well just trade it for a tackle so it's funny because i would say the receivers are better this year than they were last year and they won the super bowl last year that's the thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, Mark, look, they traded away Tyreek Hill and won the Super Bowl twice, and they got Marquise Brown to replace Marquez Valdez Scantling. They, they they need a tackle more than they need a receiver. Yeah. You guys see they, that Andy Reid quote about Kadarius? Yeah. Is that one of the most talented <laughs> players on our team, baby? Back again, baby. I'm I'd, back. Say, I'd say we're so back, but I never left. I was never gone. So, <laughs> since we're since we're halfway through the draft here, I want to read a couple comments, which is from Cooper. Ben looks like he would star in a Disney made for TV movie about a kid who became a GM. <laughs> I accept that one. That one's fine. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Yusuf says, Ben, my wife says your voice is too shrill for our newborn baby. Jesus. That's her problem. I don't <laughs> know what she's doing from it. That's on her. I don't know. Hyphus, hyphus, read, only read the happy ones. That's, <laughs> that's how you're supposed to. That's no, 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 no. See, because it's not hyphus. It's Austin who's sending them in our in our, our, our that video is true. chat. And, and he's sending all the ones about you being hot and all the ones about me looking dumb. And there's uh, ones about me looking hot that yeah. he's not sending. I've been reading. Read Give us okay, a here we go. We got, give us a uh, palate cleanser of P Craig being right. super hot. Yeah. Max says Solak looks so hot when he's uncomfortable with praise. Ooh, that's definitely uh -oh. not what he's. Just that's, kidding. That uh -oh. was about Craig. That was <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. All right. Good talk. Next up here, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, we'll spit it to see who goes. Come on, baby. Keep it going. Closer to the camera, Dad. There you go. Sorry. Right, yeah, I'm just. I'm yeah. like the guy in the Hold commercial. Still. Solak again. again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I saw people uh, complain and say if the Chiefs were moving up for this, then they were moving up to go ahead and get ahead of the Jaguars to take Brian Thomas. That's a great point. I think the Jaguars are absolutely interested in Brian Thomas. I think Brian Thomas would be a great pick here. They're taking Terry and Arnold. The, if, if, if Terry yeah. and Arnold has fallen to them at 17, they moved off of Darius Williams this year as their cornerback too. They have Tyson Campbell who's a nice corner one. I, I don't think he's like a high tier corner one. And so drafting a, a first round guy, potentially having Campbell as a great two and Arnold stepping into that role, it just gives you a much better man coverage on the outside. 
side, which you have to remember, they made a defensive coordinator change this year. Mike Caldwell is out. Ryan Nielsen is in. Ryan Nielsen's press man, baby. Like we are, we are lining corners up. And we're letting them go to work. Uh, they, he's coming from that that Saint system, right, where they just had those great outside corners for so long. And so the, the Jags really do need to invest in that position. I know they're looking at all the top receivers, and there's a ton of smoke there right now. Wide receiver would not surprise me. Thomas would be a great pick here. But Arnold at, all the way down to 17 is excellent for Jacksonville. I think that that's the choice they'd make. I, I totally agree. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I, this is I like totally agree. 17 picks in. If you were like, Ben, you know, grade the first round. If this is how it'll look in a week, I would call this one of the best picks of the first round. Looking at it right now. Terry and Arnold, lights out. All right, spilling the board here for the Bengals at number 18. <laughs> Who's it going to yep. be? I'm like the ah. progressive commercial with LL Cool J. Like, that's not how you take a selfie, Dad. So, like, can we get an update Craig. on what are the odds Ooh. of me being picked one out of the first Oh, 18? that's so much harder to calculate details. <laughs> okay, I'll figure it out. All right. Cincinnati up for me here. Uh, look, as much as I'd love to give them, like, a sexy wide receiver as they plan for perhaps a future without T. Higgins. Do it. No, I'm I'm going to I'm gonna give them an off. I'm going to give them a Marius Mims. I'm going to give them a big mauler on the line uh because i think that's still the most important thing for cincinnati is keeping mm. joe burrow upright and they just need a big boy up front to to, yeah. to move some human beings move some weight around so i'm going to mary smims I, I really i like this a lot because the Bengals have uh, uh trent brown who they went and they got from the uh uh the patriots, patriots. That, that's the yep. team that plays new england right the patriots mm -hmm. uh they went and got from the patriots to kind of just like hold the spot for a year but you do not want Trent Brown long-term. You don't really trust Trent Brown's health long-term. So Mims, send him for a year and then plug and chug him in, in Brown's spot. And you, you still have titanic tackles. You still have Orlando Brown. And, yeah. and, and, and our Marius Mims are just enormous at the bookends. Giant That's pretty people. cool. Yeah, yeah. The, I, Mims and Trent Brown are almost like the same size, like the same height, uh, not that far off in weight. And Mims also, what I, I, the Bengals, this makes sense too, because the Bengals kind of redshirt their rookies. Like they draft Dax Hill to sit behind Jesse Bates and replace him. I think they'll take, you know, they took a receiver, Charlie Jones, to replace Tyler Boyd this year. And then I think they take a receiver maybe to replace T. Higgins. And then you have Amaris Mims who can redshirt because he's played eight games. He's played eight games. Give me a first round pick. Like I can't Wild. get over that. Like I, yeah. but I think this makes a ton of sense. So, all right, let's do this. Eventually I'll have to rig this to, for DK, but let's no, do number never. 19 Keep here. Keep it going. For the LA Rams. Uh oh. Uh -oh. There's a glare uh -oh. on Hyvis' screen. Jesus. Okay. Hold it still for crying That's out loud. Sorry, to the camera. I, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Craig. I got, it's Craig again. I started. It, just, it okay. is what it is. This is wild. Yeah, this is incredible. <laughs> DK, time. are you having a good time? Starting to get kind of mad. Do you want to just go? <laughs> you want to just, should we donate it to no, the no, no. Us? DK, no, are to, you having a good time? <laughs> we have to stick to the sanctity of the, the spinner. So let's keep it going. Um, With the Rams here at 19, the Aaron Donald just retired. I'm going to pick somebody on the defensive line. Um, I'm probably gonna just clog it right up with Byron Murphy just to yeah. step in for yeah. for Aaron Donald. As a Seahawks fan, this would make me so mad because he is extremely disruptive interior pass rusher. Aaron Donald has given the Seahawks fits for like a decade, and it's just so des uh, so disappointing. I was pretty glad to see Aaron Donald uh, retired, to be honest. Um, no offense, Aaron, but uh, getting Byron Murphy in that defense makes so much sense. He's just gonna help everybody on that offense or on that defensive line. Um, just disruptive guy from the interior. The, the Aaron Donald retiring, Kyler Murray being like, "Thank God." Mm. Tweet like he quote tweeted. Dude, it everyone like, in yeah. God. everyone I, in the I, NFC West is like, "Oh my God, finally!" I I love that DK has only picked once, and they also traded the Seahawks out of sixteen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is just the anti DK mock. Uh, also, Byron when Murphy, we did the pre-show, can go three times in a row. Yeah, to start yeah, the yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I tell you, Byron Murphy, there's like when you when you read plugged in people, there are people who say that like Byron Murphy might be one of the best defensive players in his class, right? In terms of how the league views them. And so figuring out where he goes right now is really, really tough. He might be a top ten pick. I mean, I, I yeah. think a lot of but there's not a lot of people the tackle needs. And like the Rams are like, yes, they're one of the earliest ones that actually have that as a big need. So it's it's hard to figure out. Mm -hmm. All right. Number twenty here, Craig. Your Pittsburgh Steelers on the clock. I, know. I still don't even know what I would do if I got who it is. Let's oh, I'm it safe is. again, baby. Oh, it's not me. Is it me? <laughs> Dolak. Ah. Oh. All right. This is this is a uh, immediate and thrill immediate and thrilled Brian Thomas. Uh, Let's go. Uh, LSU, okay. The wide receiver out of Washington. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, wide receiver for LSU. Uh, you move on from Deontay Johnson. You you go get Dante Jackson. Congratulations. Weird trade. Love it for you. Uh, George Pickens now as, as wide receiver one with like 
you know, Cordero Patterson and Calvin Austin. Dan it's Jefferson. Just, yeah, yeah, man. It's just it's just a horrible vibe. <laughs> Denzel it's, Mims, my guy. Yeah. Haven't uh, sold my stock still yet. Still around. And, yeah. and I never will. And I never will sell my Denzel <laughs> Mims will. stocks. Uh, but Brian Thomas, it's funny because he's a little bit redundant with George Pickens in that he is like a, a bigger body and a longer body, but he's also so good vertically and he's so good down the field. But that's the exact sort of skill set you kind of want to be redundant, right? If you're redundant with having like two super small slot guys, that's a problem. If you're redundant with like two like contested catch guys who can't separate, that's a problem. Having two guys like George Pickens and Brian Thomas who can both be X's and they can also do work from the slot and do work with the ball in their hands, like that's just, that allows you to be really, really versatile. Go pick your matchups hunt your spots you can change your game plan week over week it's a really really nice pairing uh russell wilson justin fields whoever's throwing the football it's gonna be deep shots in pittsburgh and that's what brian thomas i think did, did best when he was with lsu yeah. so good down the field with the catch radius it's a really really nice fit I was right gonna say, like, yeah, yeah the the brian thomas i feel like needs to be a little bit on the dk metcalf development track where it's like hey man go be fast on the outside and i'll throw it up to you and in the meantime you can start to be a more nuanced route runner and all that stuff and having Russell Wilson is like almost perfect. Obviously, I think even if Justin Fields ends up starting halfway through the year or before that, Justin Fields also has a beautiful deep ball down the sideline. So, yeah, this makes a ton of sense. Let's yeah, go I... to the board here so we can pull that up. We got 20 picks in the bag. Craig, how you, you feeling? You, this is probably the best possible scenario, right, Craig, where you get Brian Thomas at the 20th pick and he falls to you at this board right now? Yeah, I think, look, just depending on, like, putting all the weight on George Pickens this season to catch every pass and be the guy in Pittsburgh is a kind of like a, a lofty ask, in my opinion. And even if he's redundant, I, this is all Russell Wilson does anyway, is throw the deep ball. I hope the Steelers are just, like, layups and threes this year. Run the ball and throw it deep. <laughs> the Warriors. Yeah. Rock, the, Maury ball. Just play Maury ball. So right now we got four quarterbacks off the board with Caleb Williams and Jaden and we uh, uh, Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, and we have Drake May. We got four receivers plus Brock Bowers, so five pass catchers off the board, a bunch of tackles. Twenty first pick, we got the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins. Oh yeah, I can't say Dolphins. That word, right? Dol Dolphins. Dolphin. Dolph. Oh. Um, oh. Like, hey, hey, oh. Welcome back. Oh. He's back, baby. DK. All right. Twenty first pick, Miami. Dolphin, doll. How do I? Dolphins, doll, doll, doll. doll. like like a like a like a doll, doll that you play with. Doll, yeah, doll, dolphins. It's it's there, but it's not. Miami's on the clock, DK. <laughs> All right, there's a couple of guys. There's a couple of guys I really like here for the Dolphins. Um, it could go defensive line. It could go pass rusher. I'm gonna go with offensive line. Troy Fautanu, who obviously right now there's still some question marks over how long T Toronto Armstead is going to be wanting to play in the NFL. So um, this gives them a guy they can plug in at multiple spots on the offensive line, mm -hmm. eventually be their long-term left tackle. I just think this is a meat and potatoes pick for the Dolphins. Typically, we want to go for a guy who you know is going to be super fast or something like that, but this just makes a ton of sense for them. Uh, Troy Fontenu, man. Like, the, he hits the caliber of, like, this offensive lineman can be a weapon for you. Like, he is so good moving. He is such a dynamic athlete. He's great in space. Like, you can build a running game around the idea that you have a Troy Fontenu. And that's such a cool bar to be able to clear. And, like, mm -hmm. Joe Alt doesn't clear that. Olu Fashana doesn't. Troy Fontenu does. Incredible. All right. Well, uh, sorry. I'm we're getting we're getting word from above. Uh, 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 oh, I decided, I decided, I decided, I decided the Halo theme was the most yeah. trade guy. Yeah. I think, I think Goodell should, should be back. Goodell should come music. down like on a wire every yeah. pick. Like That'd Rihanna, be cool. the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goodell needs to be bringing more to the table. We got to talk about this on, on the pod. The draft is such like a big dog and pony show. Goodell just there in a suit. We need more outfits, costume changes, entrances, man. Come Look, on. There's <laughs> only 13. There's only 13 first round picks attending the draft. We need more pomp and circumstance. Give me something, here. Raj. They were gonna have the guys show up on boats in like the Bellagio Fountain oh, or yeah. something, and they were gonna get, and I they scrapped that year. idea. We need to do that. That was boat an awesome year. idea. Bring I back agree. The that was good. Bring back the boats. Also, JC Latham's like 340 pounds. What could go wrong putting him in a little boat to get him to the middle of a fountain? You know what I mean? Like to be incredible. Sure. All right, so let's throw. So the trade god here, let's see here. So we have the Eagles are on the clock at number 22. The Philadelphia Eagles have traded the 22nd uh, pick to Buffalo for uh, moving back six spots to 28. They also get 144th pick this year and a third rounder from Buffalo next year. Buffalo moves up to the 22nd pick. It's a little randomizer. Buffalo is on the clock. And now who's making this pick for the Bills? Who's making this pick for the oh, Bills? Oh, it is. Wow. Oh, he's oh, he's oh. Oh. He's a late breaker coming around the corner. It's wow. Danny Gully, two picks in a row. He's due. He's a polo. Right. Oh, no. He's just been like a lap behind everybody for yeah. the first hour. <laughs> just been drafting off you guys. Um, <laughs> all right. So in, in 
a real world scenario that Bills trading up in the first round. I feel like this is this would be for a receiver. And I think I this is going to be a controversial pick a little bit because, you know, we've talked about this many times. A.D. Mitchell's analytical profile is is very concerning, but he's a big, fast, explosive jump ball winner who can shoo, get shoo, deep, shoo, shoo. He can get open. A.D. Mitchell on the Buffaloes feels like a match made in heaven to me. The Buffaloes. On the Buffalo, did I say that? On you the did, Bills. Yeah, but that's kind of. Better. I thought that I was like, like a cool joke. I, I thought that was like on purpose. That was. It's also kind of weird, by the way, that the name of the Bills is it the Buffalo Bills. It, yeah, it, is it named after the guy Buffalo Bill? Why are they the Buffalo so. Bills? Yeah, I don't know that. I've never thought about this before. I assume it's the named only, after their their logo, Buffalo Bill Cody. Let me their get on that. A Buffalo. Let me yeah. get on that. Why? I've never thought about this. I'll before. play on the name of the famed Wild Wild West showman Buffalo Bill Cody. Yeah. So, but, but is it's, there any other city that the logo is the is the city? Good question. I can't think of it. The logo is about? the city. The logo, the logo is Bill. No, sorry. I no, mean, it's Buffalo, a Buffalo is the city. Oh, it's a Buffalo. Wait, the logo is a Buffalo. <laughs> the logo is a Buffalo. The name I've of the never thought mascot that. is That's crazy. Bill. Is, is it weird that in my head, a Bill is a Buffalo? That's what yes. happened to me. I was like, that's what that is. The Buffalo Williams. Bill has nothing to do with Buffaloes, <laughs> now that I think about it. This, none of Why this are they sense. called this? I think that we should, I think Bill should be a nickname for Buffalo, officially. I, it ha the, yeah, or just like say he's a Buffalo now. That sounds right. Producers in the chat right now are just screaming at us to get off yeah, the anyway, we should probably move on. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, congrats on A.D. Mitchell to Buffalo. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, I will uh, say I do think A.D. Mitchell is going to be the fifth receiver off the board. Like, for uh, as the dust is settling, it seems like he's the guy. It seems like he's going yeah. down one. Yep. All right, the 23rd pick, the Minnesota Vikings have traded that pick to the Los Angeles Chargers as part of their deal to move up. So the Chargers are on the clock. Ben Solak, you ah. get to decide. Chargers are on the clock with the 23rd pick. You don't give them a wide receiver. I don't want to. Give me a defensive I, player. I gave them Brock Bowers. I want to give them an offensive. Oh lineman. right, we gave him Brock Bowers. Right, that's right. That's right. I want to give them an offensive lineman. Now we, we've we've exhausted most of the traditional tackles. Right, Graham Barton is there, but he's probably playing on the interior. I don't want to give them Xavier. Oh, this is actually this is the first tough one. Uh, I'm going to give them. I'll I'll give him Taylor Guyton, uh, the, the the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. Ta Tyler Guyton is not a player that I would be taking here. I have some concerns about the sand in Guyton's pants. He doesn't really seem like a – is he a Harbaugh guy? Ah, <laughs> I don't know if I like this pick. I already said it. Okay. Well, we'll make him change the graphic. It's fine. It's just, just nah, that no, they no, can no. do it again. What does that mean, the sand in his pants? He's not yeah. heavy enough? Yeah, so he's he's Anchor. really uh, he carries a lot of his weight in the upper half. His legs are pretty thin, and he, he's kind mm. of on stilts, right? And so when he goes to to drop his mass and anchor, right, and take power to him, he just he struggles with that through his chest. He has a lot of a mass underneath, and so he still still has like a, a frame that can carry it. So hopefully he can get bigger, he can get a little bit heavier. Uh, uh, but you're gonna play him on the right side, maybe develop him for a year behind Pipkins. I think that investing in the offensive line is very much the horrible way to go about things. Mm -hmm. This is an unfriendly board for them, though. When 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 you get to this area here in in the late twenties or excuse me, early 20s, uh, and, and a lot of the top tackles have gone, and now the best guys like Jackson Powers Johnson and, and Graham Barton, you can make that pick. Like They do have a need at center, but I don't think they'd be going there that early in round one. I don't think those the, the, those guys are, are to that level. And so, so I picked Guyton, but this is this is a weird spot for the Chargers. It's very likely they end up with this 23rd overall pick, and so something to figure out for them moving forward. It's also plenty. I'm, I'm sure if you're making picks, we've regretted immediately in fantasy football that happens. There's definitely been GMs who picked a guy, and then like we're like, damn. Should have picked that other guy. Immediate so, regret. Yeah, it's just like incredible. <laughs> like the post We've all done it. We've all Fires, had fires yeah. remorse. Yeah. 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 All right. Next up on the clock here, we got the Dallas Cowboys with the 25th pick. Uh, 24th? Dallas, sorry, 25th? I can't count. Yeah, the 24th, 24th. pick. Yeah, yeah. 24th pick, Dallas Cowboys. We've got – oh, I already hit it while I was doing it. I'm sorry. I forgot. I hit it. Well, we got there. Check, 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 check. Is that – It's so lucky again. Me no again. Okay. Dallas Cowboys. All right. I am uh, taking – Oh man, I'm not prepared for this either. Uh Johnny Newton looks like he might make sense. Graham well, Barton, like a defensive tackle. Two I just, years in I, a row. I'm stunned yeah. that you, you don't think Cowboys would take like a Graham Barton or. or I, I, so I'm thinking like if guy. I move Graham Barton to guard and then I move Tyler Smith to tackle, that's what I like the most right now on this board. Uh, I will say that like I think the Cowboys are a great team candidate to just go nuts in round one. Like with, with the Michael Parsons situation developing as that is like, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up taking an edge rusher because they feel like they're not moving on from him. I've heard they like Edger and Cooper well, linebacker. Say the Texas. Michael Parsons thing. You're saying the Cowboys might get rid of Michael Parsons. Is that what you're there's saying? like, there's the whole like, Oh, they're kind of sick and tired of him. Like, like the, the Cowboys feel very like on a precipice as a team. Like no one is extended past 2024 and those teams tend to behave very weird in the draft. 
big trade up, surprising picks in the first round. Like the not a lot would surprise me, really shock me from the Cowboys pick. I'm going to take Graham Barring here. Who's the, he played offensive tackle at Duke. He's considered more of an interior offensive lineman uh, in the league. Right now, the, the, the Cowboys have tackle needs because Ty, uh, Tyron Smith is gone, but they have Tyler Smith in hand, who they drafted to be the left tackle uh, heir apparent. He's just been so good at guard. And so they could take a tackle and leave Tyler Smith at guard, or they could take a guard, Graham Barton, and then move Tyler Smith to tackle. I think that's what they're going to do here. Barton's a lights out player, man. He's as eddy steady as they come. I think that he has the versatility to play uh, uh, pretty much four, maybe even five spots on the line if you like him at center. Uh, so this is a good pick for the Cowboys because you can kind of figure out what gap he plugs once you get him into the building so barton at 24 to the cowboys i like that too can i also point out that dk we were freaking out he went like 13 picks i haven't picked since number eight i've been, I haven't picked 16 <laughs> it's not as funny though it's not as funny and it's not as yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. No, it's not. did you vet the randomness of this randomizer i mean like if i did. wanted to how would i do that like i, I sit there like aristotle it'd take a lot like of 100 work, coin flip like yeah i don't know it seems really hard i kind of just googled it um all right next up here we have the packers 25th overall uh, we have, all right, so we have, yeah, here's our board right here. We got Graham Barton in Dallas. We got Tyler Guyton in the Chargers. So I think we are still on pace to have like a record amount of offensive players in the first round mm-hmm. and offensive tackles, which I, I, I guess I'm curious. Maybe we can hit this at the end, but I, I, I'm curious if we think this is just about this year's class or if there's some kind of trend here. But uh, there's a lot of just positional cornerstones, like quarterback, receivers, tackles, and cornerbacks. Like I think there's like a lot of foundational building blocks, like no linebackers, no safeties. Yeah, I think uh, it's probably just random. I mean, there's, you're not going to see like a of ton of tackles every single year, but yeah. All right, next up here. One percent got... chance that Heifetz doesn't pick in 16 trade picks. By the way, Ooh. Packers. Oh, is it? Please, please. So lack again. Three straight for Ben. So lack again. I, I can't be stopped. This is uh, uh such a bad spot for the Packers because they would have absolutely loved to have taken Graham Barton. Like that would have yeah. been huge for them, delightful for them. They would have been thrilled by it. I don't think Jackson Powers Johnson is the sort of athlete, the sort of player that they want in the interior. Accordingly, I'm going Cooper DeGene. It was the corner slash safety out of Iowa. I do think for the Packers, he's probably going to find more reps early at safety relative to corner. There are people who are like worried about the corner situation in Green Bay. Man, uh, you got to watch some of these young kids. Like Carrington, Carrington Valentine was playing great ball for them on the outside last year. Jay Alexander hopefully coming back healthy. I think they're better at corner than people realize. Safety is the spot of weakness. So you bring DeGene in. He's... Uh, he's got the ability to play corner. You start him at safety, see if he can make the transition. Maybe he's backing outside corner up to start. So you're kind of figuring stuff out in camp. We're talking about a 6'2", like 205 guy with really good movement skills, with great zone eyes. He understands how to find the ball. And there's nothing wrong with a uh, safety having the ability to go play man coverage. All of a sudden, you rotate him down. He's over to tight end. He knows what he's doing. That's excellent news. And so uh, DeGene to the Packers, I like... This is a bit of a fall for DeGene. DeGene's line right now is right. probably like 21 and a half, 22 and a half. He gets down to Green Bay at 25. They just get him into the building, solve the problem later, figure out where he goes later. Another first round defensive player for the Green Bay Packers. I was going to say, how many, this is like eight or nine. They took Lucas Van Ness from Iowa last year on D2-2. They're getting Hawkeyes into the building, all right? Some corn-fed Iowans. DK, am I crazy for saying Cooper DeGene is Kirkland Graham, Jalen Ramsey? Um, (laughs) Is that crazy? (laughs) I mean, I guess from the point of view of super athlete who can play safety or corner, it makes some sense. Um, I think Ramsey was on a whole different level, though. All right. Well, all right, fine. I'm crazy. All right. So next up here, we got Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I love when the Bays are back to back with Green Bay and Tampa Bay. What's what's the Green Bay, by the way? I don't, I, where is where that? Lake? Another great question. I have it's, truly no idea. What is the Green Bay? I, I saw like, Lake Michigan. What are you talking about? It's, is it's, there an actual it's, Green it's Bay? The Green Bay. I've watched a and, thousand games at Lambeau. They've never like had the track, the shot of like, and the green Bay. I'm like, is there like, they show yeah. everything in the city. There's an actual yeah. green Bay. There's it's on, it's on a Bay. I wouldn't say it's like a, an amazing Bay because it's just a Northern Michigan. Like it's not like, there's like a ton of commerce going on, but there's commerce. Yeah. There's a lake guys. I, well then why is it called a Bay? This is scintillating content, guys. Anyway, um, I love that every time they cut to a Rams or Chargers game, they always show like the Santa Monica Pier, which is like an hour and a half away yes. from right. Exactly. Like, what are we yeah. talking about? I did, I've never seen the Green Bay. That's all I'm saying. All right, next well, up, Tampa Bay. By the way, I think people that live in Tampa call it Tampa and not Tampa Bay. Oh, me okay, again? Well, Gosh, I'll never no be lag. killed. I More can't straight. be stopped. All right. Um. I really like Jackson Bowers Johnson here uh, to, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now there uh, there's been some uh, conversation, like maybe he's not going to be around one player. Uh, there's been some conversation. Maybe Zach Frazier out of West Virginia is the first center off the board. I think mm. that like 
it's true that a couple teams have Frazier higher and maybe Paris Johnson isn't like as early as we thought, but I still think he's the best center in the draft. I do think he's, he's the most likely one to go round one overall for the, uh, uh, for the Buccaneers. You just, you had uh, the retirement of the redhead, not Kappa uh, Jensen, Ryan Jensen. Right, you had right. Ryan Jensen who retired this past season. Uh, they, they have a, a pretty weak depth chart right now on the interior. They already had one last season and they're still losing more talent there. Uh, it'd be nice to get a guy in Paris Johnson who can firstly play the pivot. He can snap the ball. You know, he's a center, but he's also guard size, right? He is 330 pounds. And so if you do want to play some stuff out in camp and see if you can switch spots with him, he does have the size to kick over to center on like some other or kick over to guard on like some other centers in this class. So Powers Johnson for the, the, the Buccaneers, it's a bit of a, eat your Reedy's pick a bit of a eat your vegetables pick, but it's a necessary pick for them as they kind of try to rebuild, enter a, a new era here under Baker Mayfield. Look at all those Ben Solaks on this this chart. Oh, it's electric. Just Can we make it five? Woogie woogie. What's more likely that Ben goes five straight or that DK went once in the first 20? <laughs> well, okay. So that's one over four to the fourth power. We can pull up the board. Jackson Powers Johnson. We can pull up the board here too. So uh, four percent chance. Down. No, point four percent chance. I get four Ooh. picks in a row. Wow. All right, we're coming like in on the final stretch here, which is a bunch of Super Bowl contenders plus the Cardinals and Seahawks. So, um, hey now. I, I didn't even know that was controversial. Sorry. All right, so six picks here left. So we got Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. This is from a trade down they had last year. Let's see who's gonna get it. Who's gonna get it? Who's going to get it? Uh, oh, right. Hold it oh, still. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm an Grandpa. idiot. Oh, it's me. Shh, damn it. I'm literally like the guy with the LL Cool J. You're like, that's not how you take a selfie. Like, that's how I feel doing this. All right. I'm on the clock for the Cardinals. I have not. Wow. 18 picks. I haven't picked. Uh, Arizona. Dude, Jared. Uh, Jared verse. No question. If Arizona gets the job. Oh, wow. Oh, he's still there. Yes. He's still Come. there. Uh, Jared versus pass rush at Florida State. The Cardinals don't have a lot of, like, good players. Like, they have Kyler Murray quarterback, and they have Paris Johnson Jr., uh, at tackle, and so they don't need the positions teams traditionally need, but if you're getting Marvin Harrison Jr. at receiver, and you still can get a pass rusher like Jared Verse, like it's the kind of guys that just don't usually fall, and so Arizona needs that. They also need cornerback, but they're still picking like 35th, I believe, so you can it, it, like, if just supply and demand, like there are not many pass rushers, but Arizona could get easily Jared Verse, and then there are like three cornerbacks that they could very happily walk away with an eight picks. I, I think that the odds are that we will be saying on Sunday that the Cardinals are like the winner of the draft. We'll be asking if they can compete in the NFC West for the division title. All right, I like it. All right, well, yeah. we can move it on. So All right, let's Cardinals are Marvin Harrison Jr. and Jared Verse, man. That's a good day in the yeah. office. They're going to Monty Austin <laughs> Fort. All right, so now Eagles are on the clock. Your 20th pick. The Eagles traded oh, for the Bills hurts. spot. So the Eagles are on the – let's see who Philadelphia takes. So who's picking for Philly? It better not be Solak. It is Craig. Craig, Let's you are. Oh, finally. Been, Where are you pointing that thing? I'm sorry. I started straight looking, in front of you. I, when I was looking at the camera. <laughs> the camera's in well. the same spot every time. I started but looking at you, the camera. In front of your face. Your face I was looking at the camera. And good it was God, good. Man. It was okay. working when I was looking at the camera. But then I start looking at the screen and I get all messed up. So I need hold it. Whatever. The point. Craig, make the Eagles pick. Make the Eagles pick. Okay, okay, okay. Jeez. I'm going to give... I'm going to give Philly a corner. Darius Slay and James Bradbury are kind of older, both in their 30s. I'm going to give them Kool-Aid McKinstry. Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. uh, Great name. Look, you, when in doubt, just give the Eagles a guy from Bama or Georgia. And so I'm, I'm going with Kool-Aid, and I'm, I'm filling mm -hmm. out there. I'm, I'm doing some some long-term planning at the cornerback position mm -hmm. for Philly. Like that. Yeah. And they, they would have... I think like if they know they're getting Kool-Aid, they would have like, I think moved off the Bradbury contract and they'll just start them. Like, I don't even think they'll, they'll necessarily have to sit them for that long if they don't want to. McKinstry is an interesting cat for the for round one. So there's, there's, it turns out a little bit more health concerns, I think, than, than we thought there was pre-draft process. It was him and Nate Wiggins out of Clemson, who I think like both have a shot to go here when we get to this late, late stage. I don't know if either does. And so figuring out like the back end of this corner class after Cooper DeGene here in the first round is a, is a tricky one. All right. So we can, uh, we can go to the – we have the Detroit Lions here, with the 29th pick. So, first of all, we are going to be at the draft, the NFL draft in Detroit Ooh, next Detroit. Week, seven days from today. We have a live show on next Wednesday, six days from today. We still have some tickets, so you can go. Uh, we can – if you go to the NFL Draft Show on Spotify, we have it in all our episode descriptions. We can throw a comment out there, maybe something in the YouTube page, but we have uh, a few tickets that – uh, have been released. So you, if you want to go and you'll be in the draft for Detroit or anywhere to look, you want to list random cities around Detroit and driving distance, any of those places. If maybe you're in Green Battle Bay, Creek, if you're boom. in Rockford, sure. Bro, if you're coming up from Toledo, Heck yeah. Heck drive yeah. on to Detroit. We're doing a live show at the St. Andrews yeah. Theater. And so we have some tickets left. So We're going to make out. DK run a 40. It'll be great. Yep. All right. I'm holding Detroit's also the on the water, by the way, because there's more lakes up here in case anyone yeah, was they, serious. They show those on the broadcast. I've never the seen the Great that. Lakes. 
Craig, <laughs> you're oh. picking for the Detroit Lions, Craig. Who are they taking 29th overall? Um, uh, man. Ooh. Chop Robinson still on the board? That's yeah. what I just looked at. <laughs> so that goes, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I'm, I'm going to give him Chop. Dan Campbell, Chop. All right. Chop kneecaps. It, it's it's perfect. I'm going to give him Chop Robinson <laughs> out of Penn State, a rusher. He's a good yeah. – he, he'd be a fun compliment to Aiden Hutchinson, like a speed guy kind of off the edge. They have a lot of power-based rushers, I feel like, and he gives them that explosive element. Yeah. The you know how like every Lions fan loves James Houston Jr. so much, right? And they're yeah. wait, the Houston the fourth, whatever. Uh, yeah, they like they Chop Robinson's the sort of similar rusher, but he can like play more downs. He can play more snaps. He can be on the field more regularly for like first and second down on the on those rundowns. He's a really really nice foil to, to Hutchinson in terms of your weak side and your strong side rusher. I think like Chop to the Lions is is a is a very fun peg if he makes it all the way down here. Love it. All right, next up we have the Baltimore Ravens here picking number thirty. Can we throw the uh, the top? 29 picks up here. We have the board. So the Ravens are looking at board. I think the Ravens are the one that's giving me the most trouble because the Ravens have a lot of spots they need, but the trade gods are not calling. So that's that we have the Ravens here. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, DK's back. And we got the, so we got the top 29 picks. DK's back. We Did have, we see the result of the spin? No, I screwed it up. It's my fault. We have shot. <laughs> we have you? the three picks left here. These three. Who teams. won? Did DK win? He's going to do it, do it again. again. I, I screwed think. it up. I asked for the board and then I hit the button. I screwed. I confused everyone's my fault, but. So if just just give it to poor DK. Yeah, DK, <laughs> just go. Just poor me. Yeah, DK, just pick someone. DK, just, just pick go. someone for the Ravens. Jeez, Louise. All right. Um, the Baltimore Ravens. To me, Darius Robinson screams Baltimore Raven. Just oh, a yeah, big, yeah, yeah. strong, strapping young fellow who they can plug <laughs> in on the defensive line in that rotation. He's going to cause a lot of disruption. He can move and play different spots on the defensive line. I think he can play interior end on the edge. He's got that size and, and uh, physicality and strength. So I think this is a really good value for Darius we're, we're killing the like the last six, f- f- five picks of this draft. Like yeah. uh, powers, Johnson, Quillian McKinstry chop brought like Darius Robinson. These are great fits. We're, yeah. oh, we're so good at this. All right. We have the, this is really us. easy. It's just easy. <laughs> this is so easy. The two picks left. We have the Sa- San Francisco sad boy, 49ers who just lost the Super Bowl, and it's always really sad for them. So we'll see who's making this pick for them. 31st on the, on the clock. So I'm holding the camera now. I'm getting better at it. I'm sorry. There you go. Who is it? I want I want this. Still moving it around me. quite a lot. There we go. You know so what, loud. Man? Go birds. Man, I want to make this pick. Uh okay, don't worry. I'll be handling this. Uh <laughs> I'm going to take here Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle yeah. out of Illinois. Now, the 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 49ers moved off Eric Armstead's contract this year. And they they filled that gap by getting Jordan Elliott from the Browns, and they brought Malik Collins in from the Texans, and they, they did the the smart team thing, which is they have like enough guys where if they needed to start and just rotate with those dudes, they'd be fine. But I definitely think that 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 Newton is a far more impactful penetration player, one gap player, pass rushing player, the sort of style guy that they like more so than Jordan Elliott, more so than Malik Collins. Like this is like a pretty high ceiling player. The other thing about Newton that I think is really important for the Niners is that they really suffered for run defense at uh, defensive attack in the last couple of years with how much they, they asked those guys to penetrate and get upfield. And that was a big part of why they added Javon Hargrave. He's such a good run defender, uh, still playing in one gap. Newton, man, is just, he's that classic example of just like a, a, a penetration defensive tackle who's also weirdly good at defending the run. And so I think Newton is, is a great fit for the Niners. Bit of a luxury, but I think they'd like it. All right. Seahawks, baby. DK. I... DK, as the spinner spins, who would you take if you were in charge? It's not spinning, Hyvitz. I... <laughs> um, Who would I take if I was yeah. in charge? Man. The, the board has fallen kind of weirdly for the season. It might be yours. It might be yours. How many picks did Solak oh. give it to me? Oh. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. Right here. Oh. No, it's me, baby. Oh. Wait, is it not? It's me. That was crazy. No, 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 no. Back to review. Oh, you got to unlock it. You got to unlock it. That's my cat. That's my cat. That's the cat. That's the Wait, no. Sorry. Wait. No, it's like Moonlight. No. Moonlight. You're the winner. DK. It's your pick. He was out of bounds. I saw it happen. You got to check the tape. Um. All right. So oh, I, what I was saying cat, was the board the felt kind of weird for the Seahawks here. Obviously they traded back from 16. Now they're sitting at 32. Uh, I would have been running to the podium for Johnny Newton, but unfortunately he just went. Yeah. I don't, th- I don't really think the Seahawks are going to like a guy like Nate Wiggins, who just doesn't really love tackling. Um, I don't think well, they'll take which another. Which team is, is interested in a player who doesn't like Maybe tackling. this is why he's fallen. I don't that's, know. That's I mean, Craig. That's a great question. Cause there know, are some, there's, there might be some teams. So to me, this is coming down to, Zach Frazier, offensive center. 
Um, the CXL offensive needed, center. I don't know why I said that. The center <laughs> position. Uh, they have a big need at the center position. The other guy I'm looking at here, which would be like the most Seahawks pick I can imagine. The Seahawks love taking running backs and linebackers more than any other team in the first round is junior Colson, the linebacker out of Michigan. I just think he makes a lot of sense for the Seahawks because number oh. one, they kind of missed out on the whole uh, free agency run on, on linebackers. They lost Jordan Brooks. They tried to get uh, the Baltimore guy whose name Patrick queen. And yep. that didn't work out for them. And so Mike Steelers. McDonald, the Ravens defensive coordinator went to Seattle right. as the head coach. They missed out on Patrick queen, but then junior Colson played, uh, at Michigan. He played, yes, he played in the system that uh, McDonald sort of installed in Michigan. So this just makes sense. He knows that system. He could be their sort of center, middle of the field guy that can control the defense. He can play all over the place. He's rangy. He's a great tackler. He's tough. He played half the season with like a club on his hand. He just fits to me like John Schneider is going to be loving this guy. Um, so I'm giving him, uh, this is probably going to be deemed a reach, but that's perfect for the Seahawks. So Junior Colson. I need Seahawks Twitter on draft night. If they trade back, 16 picks to take a linebacker <laughs> I, I will I'm, it will be a john schneider he, he can't help himself this it is, it, sense, this is what he's saying. the content will be perfect it, but again if the two picks we're saying are like the ones that are going to make everyone go crazy the raiders and seahawks i think that we've done a pretty good job here today so so i i dk i think that makes a ton of sense and that it doesn't make a ton of sense but it also makes a ton of sense remaining right. on the board nate wiggins doesn't go which i would be surprised That's if nate wiggins doesn't go yeah. but i wouldn't be shocked just given the given the way things seem like that they're falling lad mcconkey i think that's fair zach frazier i think that's fair troy franklin didn't go i think that's reasonable kingsley suamatia man is, is is the one that the byu tackle that surprises me i think we're likely to see see him maybe jordan morgan out of arizona go round one but all together, I think 32 for 32. Yeah. We did we did pretty good with so Xavier Worthy. Let's throw the big board up. Maybe. Let's throw the yeah. big board up here for the 32 picks. So I'm curious, DK, since you barely spoke, I want you to start. Which yeah, yeah. of these picks? Uh, DK, won? run through all 32 here and yeah, just kind yeah, of give yeah. your analysis give, on give each my player. Sure. Yeah. 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 Just you know, quick 60 seconds. No. What what actually is the question, Hyphens? What, <laughs> what would you like me to know? Thursday. Which one of these do you think is your favorite and you think would be uh, either the most fun or the best fit or anything that gets your blood flowing on any of these 32 as you look at them? And can you do, can you do best fit, worst fit? Uh, sure. Okay. So best fit for me, gotta be Marvin Harrison, Arizona Cardinals. Just love that. I think that's perfect for them. He's a, he's a force multiplier for everybody else on that offense. Um, Cardinals played that pretty perfectly. Um, worst fit. Yeah, I think the scariest, the scariest pick for me is the Bills trading up for A.D. Mitchell just because I see him as a mm. boomer bust type of player. I, I really do like his tape, but I think there's there's plenty of legitimate question marks about him. Um, and trading up to get that guy is a little bit of a risk. So um, that that could be a boom, boomer bust pick. That's a trade god for you. We're, we're just we're at the hands of the trade god. <laughs> there's nothing to be done because in the NFL draft, someone else makes the trades. Yes. Copyright. That's not what copyright. I think my is. favorite pick overall. Trademark. Though, Michael Penix to the Raiders. That's your favorite. That's yeah, my favorite pick. Just for <laughs> just for the content, for the fun. All right. So again, a few reminders. We do the NFL draft show. You can subscribe to the Ringer NFL YouTube page that you're on watching this right now. So it's YouTube.com/slash at Ringer NFL. Our Ringer NFL draft show podcast. Just go to Spotify. We're going to be having episodes on Thursday, on Friday, on the following Sunday. Like a lot of episodes on the draft. We fantasy football the whole season. Our next and episode is the Take Purge, uh, oh, which boy. is the the most fun episode that we do. That's, the sirens are for the Take Purge. We That's do two every season, year: yeah. one for the draft, one for fantasy. It's it's the way, most fun thing we do. Way better sound drops in that one than the we 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 woo from this one. Yes. Um. So, also again, we have released a few more tickets to the our Detroit show. So if you want to go see our live show, it's on Wednesday, April 24th in Detroit at the St. Andrews Theater. So go and get the tickets. We'll tweet them all. We'll make sure uh, our Twitter will make sure to tweet those out. And um, I think there are people are reselling them for around 300. So get them yeah. while you can. I, I know. Like Craig Craig Holbrook, the, Craig you're the worst Holbrook marketing Venmo manager. is reselling. Yeah. No, three, <laughs> Craig <laughs> understands that you create FOMO. It's like the Taylor Swift <laughs> ticket for $1,500. Oh, man, I, I, sh I can only get these for 250. It's pretty good. Like, you know, it's they were going for two grand, but, you know. Just a few hundred bucks. I'm now. playing chess. Yeah, I'm sure. playing marketing chess over here. Yeah, that's it's yeah, they're that's basically true. ungettable. Don't even try to get the tickets. They're they're <laughs> unless you click the link, in which case they're there. Don't even bother. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you to Danny Kelly, who well, he didn't really do anything actually, but thank you to Craig. True. Thank you to Soul Active. Craig apparently is really hot. No, DK, you did a lot. You're great. But thank DK you. DK only had five picks. So sad. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I barely picked either. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Solak, for so I mean, sad. ended up doing 18 of these picks and also for uh, weathering the storm. So I had 12, I had 10, DK had five, Heifetz had five. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Ah. Nice. Ideal distribution. See you guys next week. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank you, Kai. Thank you. I, there's too many people to name. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Connor. Thank you. I can't name everybody, but thank you, everyone. This was a lot of fun. Um, but most of all, of course. The number one person who helped us the most. God? No. Thank you, Lord! Lord! Lord. Thank you, Ace of Base. Woo. Nice. Love, love Ace of Base <laughs> and all the things they sang. You uh, don't know it, Ace the, of Base? I saw the sign. Is it, is it I saw the sign? It's I yeah. saw the sign, right? Yeah. I saw the sign. Okay, he knows it. He knows it. <laughs> uh, Jack, you could just end the stream, whatever. We'll keep yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. forever. That's we the first song in the, in the Pitch Perfect movie. Great film. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. right. Yeah. On stage. Yeah. And, and then, those movies and then were good. Anna Kendrick comes and says, you guys got to be way cooler than this. And then they sing some cool songs and then they're all friends. Right. I, 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 I feel like they do that song like eight times in the movie just to like make you so annoyed with it. The ooh, 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 ooh. Wait, Do you yeah. know that yeah. the progressive like commercial that I have referenced for like three times where you're, the dad sees Ella Cool J? We were at a hotel for my cousin's wedding. Anna Kendrick was there and we're like whispering. She's like right behind us. And my dad comes over and he's like, who? Anna Kendrick? Who's that? <laughs> oh and we're like, no, Dad. hi Fitz. I hope you know that that will be you in thirty years. Less than that, you far, will be far doing less that. Than that. the phone. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like, Grandpa, hold the phone right in front of your face. All right, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>